In 2009, astronomers locked their telescopes onto a massive star in the constellation Cygnus. It was a red supergiant shining a million times brighter than the sun, and it was reaching the end of its life. The scientists were waiting for the inevitable, a supernova, one of the most powerful explosions in existence. But the explosion never happened. Instead, the star simply vanished. It blinked out of existence. No debris, no flash, just gone. It might have collapsed directly into a black hole without a sound, or it might have fizzled out in a way physics can't yet explain. But that vanishing star is a perfect reminder of a terrifying truth. We live in a universe that behaves in ways the human mind cannot fully comprehend. From the enormous structures of galaxies to the unknowable mysteries inside a singularity, space isn't just big, it is unsettling. And nothing is more unsettling than when something enters our backyard and we don't know where it came from. This is the story of Oumuamua. When Oumuamua was detected, it broke the rules immediately. It wasn't an asteroid, but it didn't behave like a comet either. It was the first interstellar object ever seen passing through our solar system. It had a bizarre shape, long and narrow, like a cigar, and it was tumbling end over end as it moved. Because of its trajectory, we know it came from deep interstellar space. But the scary thing is that we don't know where or how it was created. Its movement was so strange that seriously Serious scientists entertain the possibility that it was artificial, a probe, a dead spacecraft, something alien. It's gone now, racing back out into the dark, leaving us with the realization that the galaxy is full of things we can't identify. Oumuamua was just a small visitor. If you want to see the true monsters of the Milky Way, you have to look at the center of it all. At the heart of our galaxy lies Sagittarius A. It is a supermassive black hole with a mass four million times greater than our sun. It is a region where gravity is so intense that it breaks reality. Inside that event horizon, there is no reference for time, space, or mass. If you were to fall in, you wouldn't just be crushed, you would be spaghettified, stretched into an infinite strand of matter as you are pulled toward the singularity. But here's the thing about the universe. There is always a bigger fish. Sagittarius A. Yao seems enormous to us, but on the scale of the cosmos, it is tiny. Deep in the distance lies Ton 618, one of the largest black holes ever discovered. It is 66 billion times more massive than our sun. To put that in perspective, this single black hole is heavier than the entire Milky Way galaxy combined. It is a monster eating the universe, 18 billion light years away. Gravity is the sculptor of the cosmos, and it isn't just pulling matter into black holes. It is pulling us. Right now you are moving. The Earth the sun, the entire galaxy. We are all being dragged through space at incredible speeds toward a terrifying anomaly known as the Great Attractor. Think of it as a cosmic vacuum cleaner. We can't see it directly because it's hidden behind the dust and gas of our own galaxy, a region astronomers call the zone of avoidance, but we can feel it. It has our local group of 1,000 galaxies caught in its grip. The source of this pull is likely the Shapley supercluster, a massive concentration of 100,000 galaxies that forms the densest area in our local universe. It is gathering us up, pulling us into a train wreck of galactic chaos. And we aren't just being pulled by invisible attractors, we are on a direct collision course with our neighbor. The Andromeda galaxy is rushing toward the Milky Way every single day. Eventually, the two will crash. But crash is the wrong word. Because space is mostly empty, the stars likely won't hit each other. Instead, the galaxies will pass through one another, their gravity tearing apart the spiral structures, flinging stars into the void, and eventually merging into one massive elliptical zombie galaxy. This won't happen for another four or five billion years, so we won't be around to see it. But if you were, you would look up to see a night sky completely rearranged, dominated by a chaotic haze of foreign stars. But if the universe is defined by these massive clusters of matter, it is also defined by the opposite, the great nothing. Running counter to the superclusters are the voids. The largest one near us is the Bota's void. It is a spherical region of space, 700 million light years across, that is horrifyingly empty. In a region of this size, we should expect to find thousands of galaxies. In the Bota's void, we have found only 60. It is an abyss. If the Milky Way were in the center of the Bota's void, we wouldn't have known other galaxies existed until 
until the invention of telescopes in the 1960s. We would have thought we were truly alone in an infinite darkness. When you zoom out far enough to see these superclusters and these voids together, a strange pattern emerges. Space isn't random. It has a structure. The filaments of matter connecting galaxies bear a striking resemblance to the neurons of a human brain. Now, this could just be our human tendency to see patterns in the chaos, like seeing faces in clouds. Or it could be a sign that the architecture of the universe follows a fundamental law we have yet to discover. While those massive structures operate on time scales of billions of years, things are much more volatile closer to home. You don't need to look to the edge of the universe to find chaos. You just need to look at a star named Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a ticking time bomb. It's a red supergiant that is currently dying. Stars are essentially giant nuclear fusion reactors crushing atoms together to fight back against the crushing weight of their own gravity. But eventually, the fuel runs out. When Betelgeuse runs, out of fuel, gravity will win. The core will collapse in a fraction of a second, and the recoil will result in a supernova. When this happens, Betelgeuse will explode with such intensity that it will appear as bright as the full moon in our night sky. You won't even need a telescope to see it. It could happen tomorrow, or it could happen in a hundred thousand years. We are just waiting for the fireworks. But sometimes, the weirdest things aren't the stars, but the worlds orbiting them. In our search for Earth-like planets, we have found hellscapes that defy imagination. Take Kepler 10b. It's a rocky planet, similar in size to Earth, but it orbits 20 times closer to its star than Mercury does to the Sun. It is tidally locked, meaning one side always faces the inferno. The temperatures reach 1300 degrees Celsius. It is hot enough to melt rock, vaporize it into clouds, and then rain liquid lava back down onto the surface. Or consider Titan, Saturn's largest moon. It is the only other place in our solar system with liquid on its surface. It has rain, rivers, and lakes. But if you jumped in, you would freeze instantly. The liquid isn't water, it's methane. On Earth, methane is a gas. On Titan, it is so cold, nearly 300 degrees below zero, that natural gas turns into a liquid ocean. It is a mirror image of Earth, distorted by deep space freeze. All of these things, the black holes, the voids, the lava planets, they all exist within the observable universe. But there is a limit to what we can see. And that limit is the most disturbing thing of all. The universe is expanding. We know this, but it isn't just expanding. It is accelerating. Space itself is stretching out faster than the speed of light. This creates a horizon, a line in the sand 46 billion light years away. Anything beyond that line is moving away from us so fast that its light will never, ever reach Earth. It is lost to us forever. As the expansion of the universe continues to accelerate, it will push more more and more galaxies across that horizon. They will fade from view. In a few trillion years, if anyone is still looking up from the Milky Way, they won't see other galaxies. They won't see the cosmic web or the great attractor. They will see only their own stars surrounded by an infinite crushing blackness. They will think, they are the only galaxy in existence, with no way of knowing the rich, weird history that came before them. We are lucky. We live in the brief, golden age of the universe, where we can still see the stars, the galaxies, and the mysteries. We can still see the light. So, keep looking up. If you enjoyed this journey into the unknown, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a trip through the cosmos. See you in the next one.